touching inspiring moment with Amy Bonda Welcome to Inspiring Moments with Amy, November 2018, live from Yaoundé, the nation's political capital. Men do not shape destiny, destiny produces the man for the hour. What do we live for if it is not to make life less difficult for each other? Passion is energy. Feel the power that comes from focusing on what excites you. And today we have a very important guest on the program. His story will be a source of inspiration and source of empowerment for you. His Excellency Rangidor, Ambassador Extraordinary and Play Penitentiary of Israel to Cameroon, was previously a Director of UN Affairs at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Jerusalem between 2012 and 2016, Head of Political Section London UK, Israeli and Embassy to the UK between 2007 and 2012. He was responsible for UK and Ireland decks in Jerusalem, Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs between 2003-2007, 2006 NYC Permanent Israeli mission to the UN, Israel's representative to UNGA's Fourth Committee, covering Fourth Committee agenda in its entirety. His CV is quite long, and you will understand from his story that you can be a courageous, strong, and exemplary leader from wherever you come. We greet you, Your Excellency. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. It's an honor to have you on Ima. How fulfilling! Is your professional achievement after reading all of this? Are you satisfied or you still have a long way to go? <laughs> well, I think, um, I think the secret is never to be satisfied because if you feel that you're satisfied, then there's nothing more for you to achieve. Um, in fact, uh, every evening when I go back home to my wife, I complain about not having achieved all the targets that I set out for myself. So uh, there's always something else, something more left to uh, aspire to the next day. Was there any one of the facts challenging than the other? Well, I think that um, in my kind of career, where every three or four years I move from country to country, the temptation is to think that after a few months you settle down, you know the place, you have friends, you know a little bit about the music, the literature, the politics, therefore you understand the place, which is of course a mistake, because especially for a country which is so complex and so fascinating and multicultural as Cameroon, it takes years before you really get a grasp, before you really understand the place. So for me this is a challenge but also a source of um, frustration because I would have liked to spend many years here to get to know Cameroonian society better but of course my time is limited. We will talk a little bit about your, your country which of course is the holy land to many. It's your country by like you're born there, you're a citizen and many people relate to it because of the Bible. Mm -hmm. It all began with Abraham who had to leave the land of earth for the promised land. How peaceful has Israel's independence and innovation been? Well, I, I think uh, for most Cameroonians, uh, uh, they have uh, two different kinds of mental associations relating to Israel, two images. One is, as you said, the Holy Land, a country that is very spiritual, very religious. In fact, I've met many Cameroonians who told me that they didn't believe that the town of Jerusalem actually existed. They think that Jerusalem is a spiritual notion that exists in heaven. I think you have been to Jerusalem recently and you saw for yourself that Jerusalem actually exists and it's a, both an ancient city and a modern city. The other image that most Cameroonians have of, of Israel is unfortunately that associated with wars and terrorism and uh, violence. That too is inaccurate. It's, it is true that ever since the State of Israel was created 70 years ago exactly, 1948, we have had to fight many wars, that is true. However, uh, the wars are experienced mostly uh, along the borders of Israel. 
when you are in Tel Aviv or Jerusalem or 90% of the country, you don't sense it. People go about their daily business. It's pretty much the same as uh, the fact that life goes on in um, uh, seven uh, regions of Cameroon, in Yaounde, in Douala, and people don't sense here that there's any problem going on in the northwest, southwest, and the extreme north. Understanding the solution-oriented perspective from which you are coming, can you tell us if the Israeli people have any future for the Palestinians? I think, uh, in no, first of all, this is a question that is on the minds of every single Israeli, and I think every single Palestinian as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been living together for over 120 years. Israelis and Palestinians. The state of Israel, the modern state of Israel, was established 70 years ago, and since then we've had numerous wars between us and the Palestinians. The most recent one was yesterday, yeah. oh, when more than 400 rockets mm -hmm. were fired at Israel from the Palestinian-controlled Gaza Strip. Mm -hmm. um, if we believed for one second that it was impossible to make peace, then uh, that would be um, the end of uh, Israeli and Palestinian societies as we know them. Because once you give up on the prospect, on the chance for achieving peace, then you channel all your ambitions and mental energies into making war. War is important for survival, but mm. peace is more important. And therefore, our leadership is still doing everything in its power to try and negotiate this very, very hard conflict in the hope of achieving peace. Uh, like you said, uh, as the gold things escalated around the Gaza, as uh, Hamas terrorists fired dozens of rockets from the Gaza, uh, targeting innocent Israeli men, women, and children. As a person, as a human being, not a diplomat, how do you react to it? And uh, how would you love the Palestinian people to relate with the word peace and accept to live with you as one because I am made to understand that lots of food items are taken to Palestine every blessed day from Israel. Now we have civilians staying at the Gaza Street doing everything to assure the security. Uh, they work hand in gloves with some Palestinians though they work from their own corner. This means these are a people ready to serve. These are a people ready to share. I saw lots of greenhouses built around the Gaza Strip and I was made to understand the same quarter was built on the other side for the Palestinian people that unfortunately it was destroyed by those people. Is there a possibility of transforming your mentality someday to understand the heart you people have in Israel so you can live truly as brothers and sisters? Yes, I think, I think you touch precisely on the nature of the problem. We don't have any problem with our Palestinian neighbors. As I said, we've been living next to each other for over a century. Our problem is not with the Palestinians. Our problem is with the Hamas organization, which is on the ter terrorist organization list, not only of Israel, of the United States of America, the European Union, Canada, Japan, and many others. In other words, it's recognized internationally, globally, as a terrorist organization. And what happened in the past few days is another example for the fact that Hamas, the leadership of the Gaza Strip, is committing war crimes, crimes against humanity, not only against Israeli civilian population, but first and foremost against their own civilian population. Because they have so little money, the economy is so basic, there are no uh, employment opportunities. And instead of uh, harnessing, harnessing the talents, the ambitions, the abilities of the Palestinians towards achieving a better future for themselves, they divert everything towards war. And when they start firing hundreds of rockets into Israel and we are forced to respond, the people who suffer most are the Palestinian civilians. So my heart goes out to those Palestinian women, children, and men that suffer as a result of their own leadership. I think that, um, I'd like to think, I'd like to believe mm -hmm. that people, human beings are essentially good, no matter where they are. Okay. 
and that they, sooner or later the Palestinian population in the Gaza Strip will, will understand that the way forward lies in cooperation and peaceful coexistence, not in waging war. It has not helped them in the past. It will not True. help them today. Neither will it help them in the future. Now we leave a little bit of a hard talk and get a little bit personal. On me in 10 words, Your Excellency, we will have you describe yourself and give meaning to that description with facts. So if we say you are unique, how would you describe yourself as a unique individual? If I'm unique, then it, it's because um, each person is unique. I have never come across um, two individuals, two human beings who were identical. I lived and worked in many countries and every person I meet is unique. So in that sense, I, I suppose I'm also unique. But maybe uh, uh, what is uh, uh, unusual or different about me as a diplomat is the fact that every three or four years I have to relocate, step outside of my comfort zone, arrive in a place, for example, Cameroon. I've never been, I had never been to Africa before arriving in Yaoundé. And suddenly everything is different, the climate, the food, the sense of humor, sometimes the language. The way you make friends in Cameroon is different than the, may, the way you make friends in London or New York. Okay. So you have to reinvent yourself every three or four years and discover new aspects in your own personality, which for me, I find very refreshing. If we say you are a visionary leader, how would you describe yourself? <laughs> um, well. It's a, uh, I, I feel a little bit embarrassed describing myself as a visionary leader, but um, I, I guess in my own uh, modest or, or, or small-scale way, I try to set up objectives for the embassy uh, that I'm head of. And uh, since arriving in Cameroon two and a half years ago, I try to um, uh, prioritize humanitarian and development projects. So for me, uh, if I know at the end of a working day that we managed to help even a, a small Cameroonian NGO of 20 women. For example, a few months ago we supported the, the Cameroonian uh, Ladies Business Network and they, these are rural women from Cameroon who learn how to produce honey and how to produce cosmetics from bees. So I went back home and I told my wife, and I, fe I felt good about my work, that we helped even 20 women. So for me, it's a limited way of maybe showing some vision. And 20 is not small, because mm -hmm. those 20 women will, in their own part, do things to impact the lives of others, and it all started with you. If we say you are a hard-working and solution-oriented leader, how would you describe yourself? Well, um, I think this is another aspect of the Israeli mentality. We are very small, so we have to try harder than uh, people in big, rich countries such as the United States or Germany or France. Um, when I'm at work in the office, I work very intensively and very hard. I take my meals uh, in front of the computer so as not to waste precious time. Okay. Uh, however, I have to say that the moment I step out of the office, I also like to have fun. Mm -hmm. So, and I think Yaoundé is a, is a perfect place to have fun because of the um, Cameroonian mentality, the music, the food. Cameroonian are fun-loving people. Mm -hmm. So if I were here just working and not having fun, uh, it would be wrong as a diplomat. <laughs> so you learned something. Mm -hmm. You can be a visionary leader like His Excellency Rangi Dor, but out of so much work, you should give yourself some time to rest and also have fun. He does it best. On distinct dates, we will talk about some dates that are important in your life and you will describe how important those dates are to you. We begin with the date, the 12th of July, 2000. Uh, on the 12th of July, 2000, my daughter Anna was born and uh, she brought so much uh, joy and light into my life. And uh, just like every proud father, you know, I, I like to think of her as my little princess. Uh, Anna turned 18 last July, 
and uh, soon next month she's going to join the Israeli army because in Israel everyone has to serve in the army boys as well as girls so it's very uh, strange for me to think of my little princess wearing uniform and carrying a gun and joining the army next month <laughs> you've done your part you didn't burn too high you brought her up and it's time for her to do you proud and she'll do exactly that what about the 1st of June 2016 your excellency um, that was the day when I arrived in uh, Yaounde and started my, my job as, a, as Israel's ambassador to Cameroon. Uh, it was a, a day full of revelation and adventure because that was my first time in Africa. Mm -hmm. And not even uh, places that are more famous than Cameroon, like uh, uh, Nairobi or Pretoria mm -hmm. or Addis Ababa. It was Yaounde. I didn't know what to expect. And when I saw the, the, uh, how green and lush everything was, it filled me with, with joy because it's, it looks so different from, from Israel. Oh my. What about the 3rd of April 2014? Yeah, that was the day when um, uh, I was fortunate enough to marry my wife, uh, Ina. Uh, we, we had met before, uh, a few years before on the same day the 3rd of April wow. and four years later we deliberately decided to get married on the same date in which we had met. So uh, this day is very significant for us and uh, I'm, I'm the world's happiest husband. Oh sure you are mm -hmm. and that's why you have all the support you have from her to do the extraordinary mm -hmm. things you're doing out of ordinary means. Now we are going to leave distinct dates for my word attributes. Yeah. You will choose a letter of your choice from the alphabet, Your Excellency, and uh, you would give us the name of a country, a town, an animal, virtue beginning with that letter, and the name of a musician. So, which is your best letter? Well, um, I would say uh, the letter M. The letter M. Can we have a country beginning with the letter M? A country be beginning with the letter M, I would choose uh, Mongolia. Where you worked? Where uh, you served? I, when I was posted to Beijing in China, our embassy was also responsible for Mongolia. It's one of those countries that are almost mythical. You never think that you're going to visit a country such as Mongolia. But I was lucky enough to go there. Uh, it's very unique, very exotic, unlike any other country I've ever been to. Oh my, a town. Mm. Um, a town that I've um, uh, that I've, I've visited once and found one of the most beautiful in the world is the town of uh, uh, Montreal, Montreal in Canada. In Canada, yeah, uh, which is also a symbol of uh, of peaceful and harmonious coexistence between francophones and anglophones. An example, my country should borrow. Yeah. Mm. An animal. Monkey. <laughs> yeah, and, and monkey. What about right. the name of a musician beginning with the letter M? Ah, okay. So uh, this is uh, this is very easy because uh, my passion is classical music. Okay. So of course the most famous composer is Mozart, and uh, Mozart's music always brings happiness to people. That's nice. Mm. Just like you do a lot to make people happy. And the last one. The name of any virtuous word or maybe virtue beginning with the letter N? I think modesty, because um, which is essential for every person, but especially diplomats or ambassadors. Because uh, I keep telling my colleagues at the embassy, when I'm back home in Israel, I'm just an ordinary person living in a small apartment, uh, taking public transportation. However, when I'm posted abroad as an ambassador, people call me uh, Your Excellency. Uh, I have a driver and a limousine and I live in a residence. And sometimes it's easy to forget where you're coming from and where you're going back to. So it's essential for ambassadors to remain modest and not to think that they are elevated from other people. So how do you manage to stay modest like the Israeli citizen when you're in Israel? And when you're a diplomat, you still assume your, your functions respectively. How do you manage? I will tell you the secret. It's my wife. 
when I arrived here and uh, people called me uh, uh, excellence, excellency, I was looking around, who is this excellency? I didn't know it was me. <laughs> and then I said to my wife, you see, they are, uh, all, uh, everyone is calling me uh, excellency. Maybe you will call me your excellency? So she kicked me. And from that moment, <laughs> I never made the same mistake again. Oh my, this is really, really nice and also invigorating. I'm sure for you back at home, there's a lot to learn on this episode of the show. We thank you for being this open with us, Your thank Excellency. You. I am not allowed to call you otherwise. <laughs> yes. On my first, Your Excellency, would like to find out from you the name of the first book you read. Mm. The, the very first book I read was um, uh, a book about uh, legends associated with the Bible. These are the stories of the Bible, but developed in such a way that they become like uh, myths or legends for little children. And the person who told me those stories was my grandfather, my mother's father, uh, who was a very learned and intelligent man, and he used to tell me bedtime stories every night before I fell asleep. What is the first thing you did when you arrived to Cameroon? first thing I did upon arrival in Cameroon was um, to go out and eat Cameroonian food. And what did you eat for the first time? I ate a fresh grilled fish from Kribi here in Yaoundé. Uh -huh. And I can tell you that that was and still is the best fish I've ever had in my life. That means we will have to take Your Excellency one of these days to that place so you can <laughs> enjoy that fresh grilled fish. Mm. We'd like you to keep all those nice memories since we know from the nature of your work, at some point in time, you would have to go somewhere else. If we had the power, you are one of the few persons that would like to keep around due to your mother's nature and your ability to want to transform lives irrespective of your origins. Now, when was the first time you transformed lives in your community and why? You mean here in Cameroon or in, in Israel? In your community, that's in Israel. In Israel. Um, I, I, I'm not sure that I have transformed lives, but um, I think for me one of the most meaningful experiences was a, a few years ago when I started um, volunteering for an Israeli NGO that assists uh, asylum seekers from Africa. These are uh, refugees, asylum seekers, primarily from Eritrea and South Sudan, who went through uh, unbelievable misery and hardship because of the political situation in their countries and somehow they managed to arrive in Tel Aviv where I'm from uh, in the hope of finding a better future and I volunteered with an Israeli NGO that uh, supported them and I saw what uh, ordinary people can do if they volunteer after working hours to help fellow human beings so I hope I managed to assist or maybe transform some lives in, on a small scale, I hope. You do. And uh, permit me to make this confession in front of you because before I was selected by the embassy for the trip to Israel with my colleague, I was uh, not so sure of who I was. And after relating with the Israeli people for a week, a few days, rekindling my work spirit, I am made to understand I must keep walking and I must stay focused no matter what. So that's an impact you make and you cannot imagine how many lives are going to be transformed after watching this video. And what if that flame was not rekindled enough to have that opportunity to talk to you today? So you do transform lives. Take the credit for what you do, Thank Your you. Excellency. What would you have been if you were not the visionary leader that you are? Well, I started off as a lawyer. I qualified as a lawyer and I practiced law for several years before I became a diplomat. I guess if I hadn't become a diplomat, I would have continued uh, practicing law. And how would you like the state of relations between Israel and Cameroon to look like in the next years? Well, politically, the relationship is wonderful. It couldn't get any better. Uh, we consider Cameroon to be not only a friend of Israel, but an intimate ally of Israel. However, unfortunately, that friendship doesn't translate into people-to-people -people kind of friendship. 
because Cameroon and Israel are very far away. It's very expensive to fly between Israel and Cameroon. Even for Israeli people, it's expensive to fly to Cameroon. Then there is the language barrier. Most Israelis speak English, whereas most Cameroonians speak French. And also, uh, it is not easy to do business in Cameroon. It's not easy to invest in Cameroon. Cameroon has tremendous potential, but it is not fully realized yet. So I hope that in five or ten years from now, there will be a greater exchange between Israelis and Cameroonians on all levels, commercial, uh, um, cultural, intellectual, academic, not merely on the political level. And in the show, Your Excellency would like you to take a pledge about something you will do that if we fact check in five years, you would have done mm. that something. Well, um, you mean professionally or personally? Professionally. Mm. Professionally. Um, well, I doubt that in five years I will, uh, I will still be in Yaoundé. Maybe I will be uh, somewhere else. But um, I hope that uh, in five years from now, I will have managed to negotiate um, a scholarship agreement between the Israeli government and either the Cameroonian government or another government that would allow young students to come and, uh, come and benefit from Israeli uh, research facilities and universities. That would make me feel very fulfilled. And that is a true leader. A leader who leads by the heart is one concerned by the plight of the people, always wanting those around him or her to become better. We thank you so much for honoring this appointment. If there is one question we did not ask, we would want you to answer that question. Oh, uh, well, I have been asked before uh, about my favorite uh, Cameroonian uh, singers. Yes. And who are they? Well, I, my, the list keeps growing and growing and growing. But I think um, uh, my, recent, uh, the, my recent favorites are San Ziviani. We can't do without Charlotte Dependent. Oh, thank you so much for honoring your mm -hmm. art. Yeah, these are two wonderful mm -hmm. musicians and artists of Cameroon origin who sing and your songs the messages of your songs are food to the soul.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Never forget that no military leader has ever become great without audacity. Courage is fear holding a minute longer. A true leader like the one we just heard has the confidence to stand alone, the courage to make tough decisions, and the compassion to listen to the needs of others. We have a culture of handing over a present to our guests. And on this edition, we hand over a small package for His Excellency. We hope he will love it. That's for His Excellency and his lovely wife. You can bring it. So, your Excellency. Thank you very much. Shall I open you it now? You can. Yeah. You can. Oh. Wow. Yes. Ah. Yes. Which one is for me and which one? This is for your wife. Ah, for and my wife. The other one is for you. That's the top, and then the blue, your trousers. Oh. This is beautiful. Thank you very much. You're very Thank much you. welcome, very Your special. Excellency. Thank You're you. very much welcome. Thank you. We're glad you like it. Thank you. You're very much welcome, Your Excellency. We pray you keep coming in any time you have those gifts. It comes from our hearts and we pray you stay the person that you are because the world needs more of you. People who are very big yet they think of the smallest so they can grow like them. Thanks for honoring our invitation. Thank you. If you're inspired, you stay glued to your screens for the next edition and you don't forget to do you anytime for every other person is taken in the world. You've been watching Inspiring Moments with Amy, live from Yaoundé, the nation's political capital.